Hello everyone. So welcome back to this lecture series on data communication. And we were discussing the module two, and this is the lecture five. And the today's topic is on transmission modes. There are two techniques that we are going to discuss in this uh, topic. That is the parallel transmission mode. And the second one is the serial transmission. In case of serial transmission mode, we are going to discuss on two techniques. One is called asynchronous technique. And the second one is called as synchronous techniques. Right? So let us start our discussion with parallel transmission mode. So in parallel transmission, so we have two systems, right? And assume that there are four bits that needs to be transmitted to the other end. So we have a transmitter and a receiving node. In parallel mode, all the four bits are transmitted parallelly on four different wires. Okay, so all the four, like you may, you may even have an eight bit to be transmitted. So all the eight bits are transmitted on an eight bit line, right? So this kind of the wire configuration is also known as a parallel bus. Okay, the advantage of this is the data. So we can see that we can send a very high amount of data in a given time slot. But the drawback is the amount of wiring that is required. So we need, uh, if there are four bits we are to transmit, so we are having four wires. So if it is eight bits, uh, then it, we need eight wires. The, along with the advantage of high data rate, the drawback is with the circuit itself, the number of wires that we need here, right? So this is suitable for a very small distance application. So we see such kind of connections or such kind of uh, uh, transmission between a PC and a printer, right? So like a dot matrix printer, uh, we used to see this. And some of you should have seen this in, uh, or you could see this in microprocessor lab also, where we are connecting our PC to an interfacing card through this parallel ribbon kind of wire. So it's called a parallel mode of transmission. The second mode of transmission is called a serial mode, right? It means we are having two nodes to be connected and single wire is used to connect these two devices. If there is a data that we have transmit that will be transmitted in a, in a serial way. So one after the other. So on the other side, we are going to receive this signal, I mean, receive this bit and process it like that, right? So this is the other way of transmission. But when we see such kind of transmission mode, there is few uh, challenges that we need to address, right? We need to see when is that bit has started? When is that the, uh, the required bit pattern started and when it is going to end, right? So if, if I take the data and put them, put them into a block, right? And we can leave this starting of the bit and stopping of the bit to be bothered at the receiver side. So the receiver will be taking care of when the bit is started and when the stop 
uh, when the bit is the stop. So if that is left to the receiver side, we call this as synchronous transmission. Right. So in the synchronous transmission mode, the start and the stop bit is left to be understood at the receiver side. Right. The other way of doing is inserting a special characters. Right. So I can have a start and a stop bit. Start and a stop bit at the beginning and end of our data. So we call this as one frame. So at the beginning and at the end. So this, we call it as start bit. And the other one, the end is called as a stop bit. Right? So the challenge is to achieve the synchronization. Right? So to do that, if I use two additional overheads, which tells about the start and stop, right? So if I'm using such kind of technique, this is called as asynchronous communication, right? So in serial communications, we observe two kinds of uh, possibilities. One is uh, we need to live at the receiver side when is the bit is starting and when it is ending. Such technique is called synchronous. Whereas in an asynchronous technique, we are using a start bit and a stop bit, which will tell about when is the bit is being started and when it is going to end. So such kind of transmission mode is called as asynchronous. Right? The, when you compare it with these two techniques, the data rate, so if I take the data rate, right, so we observe that it is high when compared to the asynchronous communication. But since we are leaving the say, synchronizing uh, uh, at the receiver side, the complexity is more in the uh, synchronous serial communication when compared to the asynchronous communications, right? So this is the two possible modes of uh, transmission we observe. Okay. Just to rewind that what we discussed uh, in this still now is that we started with the discussion on line coding where we uh, are given a bit pattern, how we are converting them to waveforms and then the method of that method is called as a digital to digital conversion and later we discussed with uh, uh, analog to uh, digital conversion which is called as a pulse code modulation and then we discussed with digital to analog conversion techniques where we are taking a digital data and converting them to uh, three kinds of keying techniques, ASK, FSK, and BSK. And we observed and we also see, see saw that the differences between these uh, three techniques, right? And uh, now we discussed about the, the kind modes of transmission that are possible. So we will continue with this discussion and we will see that how the two nodes, the multiple nodes are there and there is a channel that is being connected between the nodes. How the bandwidth can be effectively used because the amount of data that the channel can carry will be very high when compared to the data that is generated by a source. So we'll continue that. Okay, so now let's see uh, what to do when we have, okay, we have a bandwidth, the channel, whose bandwidth is very large, when compared to the bandwidth, that the data that is generated by different systems. So we call them as uh, n number of connecting lines. 
right? So this process where we are going to, you know, effectively utilize the bandwidth through this process called as multiplexing. So what we do here is the different users' data are taken and they're all combined together so that it can uh, cover the entire bandwidth uh, given for the communication. So this process is called as multiplexing. Right? So we are taking n number of data and we are going to multiplex them or combine them to have one big chunk of data that can be uh, carried through this uh, bandwidth, which is very large. And at the other side, we are going to separate them. So this is called as DMUX. Okay, so demultiplexing. So that will uh, again split that into one to n number of lines. Right? So this process is called as multiplexing and demultiplexing. So we have this bandwidth. And this a process is carried out for effective, effective utilization of bandwidth. Effective utilization of bandwidth. Okay. So in this topic of effective utilization of bandwidth, we are going to see two uh, techniques or two uh, yeah, techniques we are going to discuss. One is called uh, multiplexing and demultiplexing process. The another method is called spec spec. Two very interesting concepts we are going to discuss. So there are two topics that we are going to see. One is called multiplexing. The another method we are going to discuss is called spread spread. Right. So in the multiplexing process, there are two techniques, three techniques that we are going to see. Sorry. So in multiplexing, we are going to discuss three techniques. The first one is called as frequency division multiplexing. Second one is called as wavelength division multiplexing. And the third one is called as time division multiplexing. Time division multiplexing is also called, you know, it's a digital process, a digital technique, whereas these two, they are basically analog techniques, right? So three kinds of multiplexing technique is what we are going to see. So we'll take the block diagram of it. So there is a mechanism first, an algorithm or a method which will do multiplexing. So let's call this as MUX. And we have at the other end a system that will separate this user's data that is called DMUX. Right? So for each of these devices, there are n number of lines that are connected. Right? And we need to separate, demultiplex them at the other side to a number of lines. And between these two equipment, we are having a bandwidth, a very large bandwidth is there between these two devices. Now, we have the one technique that we are going to do is, we are going to split this into, okay, so let's have a neat one, right? So there's a bandwidth. 
Now we are going to split that. So bandwidth is having some frequency range from F1 to F2. So if there are n number of users, I'm going to split. So let's split that into different frequency band. So this is one frequency band. There is an another frequency band. And there is third frequency band. So in this case, I am assuming, let us assume that we are having only, uh, we are having only three users, right? So we are having three users. So let me take this as three. Not there is no this here also, we are having three users to be, right? So now my whole frequency is split into three frequency bands, right? So three bandwidth are being constructed. So we call this first bandwidth as channel one and the last one as channel three, right? So this method is called as frequency division multiplexing. The frequency of the given bandwidth is divided into n number of users, right? So this technique is called frequency division multiplexing. What is happening here now is each of the users will have the, you know, they will be having the complete bandwidth, okay, over a over the given, over the complete time period, right? So this uh, technique is uh, basically, uh, it, it is an analog technique, right? So the second kind of method we are having is the wavelength division. So this technique, what we discussed is called as frequency division multiplexing. So this is known as FDM method, frequency division multiplexing method. Okay, now there is so there is one more uh, observation that we have to see. See, like we have this bandwidth, right? So we are now having. The bandwidth is divided into three frequency ranges, right? So the given bandwidth is split into three frequencies. And between these three frequencies, there is a guard band. So this is called as a guard band, right? Why this guard band is used, guard band is used is to avoid the co-channel interferences. So the data, the, the interference between these two frequencies is avoided using what is known as guard bands. Right? Fine. Now let us see, there's another technique we will now discuss. Okay, again, we are having this device called as MUX, and again, we are going to have the DMUX at the other side. Okay, now we are having a bandwidth, the channel between these two users. Now, again, I will assume that there are three users, one, two, three, and there are again three users, one, two, three. So there are three users at uh, multiplexing and we are demultiplexing that to three more users. Okay, now what we can do is, each of these users are assigned a wavelength, right? So you, so you can observe that. Now we are talking about what is called optical fiber communication. 
the, the data is modulated using a light. So different wavelengths, we are going to modulate it. So we are going to use three wavelengths for three users. And this data is transmitted through my optical fiber. So there are three wavelengths that are transmitted. And we have to separate that at the users. Right? OK, so this kind of technique is called as wavelength division multiplexing. And this is also an analog technique. OK, so in one case, we are separating that at different frequencies. In another one, we are using different wavelengths. Let's see the implementation part of the FDM technique, how this uh, uh, the FDM is actually implemented, right? So the idea is very simple. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to modulate. So let's call this as modulator. So how the FDM is implemented. So we are having a modulator which one works at some carrier frequency f1 and there is a second user who will be given with a third carrier frequency and there is another uh, user right so user one user two user three three are given with three frequencies and we add them right and at the decoder side, and at the decoder side, this information is split into three parts. And they are passed, the same signal is uh, uh, passed through this. So let me not use this one. So we are going to use three circuits here. Okay, so what we are doing is we are modulating the transmitting side at three frequencies. Now at the other end, we are going to pass this received signal through this bank of filters. Okay, so we have, we are using what we'll do is we will use three filters. It means it will filter. So we have this filter, which will filter my F1. Okay. The, the signals which are not the bandwidth, which is there at F1. So three filters is what we are going to use. Right. So now we are able to get back the data of the original users. This is how the FDM is implemented. It's a very simple technique. Model A, combine them. Then at the receiver side, you use filters so that the required frequencies can be separated. Right. So very simple technique to implement. But the, there is a drawback with this is that the complete bandwidth, the whole bandwidth, okay, for the, I mean, the, for the whole time, this bandwidth will be given, okay. So if any user does not have a data, then that bandwidth will, will go into waste, right. So this is a suitable application when we are dealing with backbone data. So let's see how the uh, WDM is basically done. So it gives us a simple prism where we, okay, uh, insert with three light signals and that will be added to generate one single line. And again, a prism can be used to separate that into the required wavelengths, right? So the very, the, even WDM is also very simple uh, to implement, okay? But the requirement is there should be a, uh, 
continuous amount of data of the users. The digital technique, which is very, very popular, is called as time division multiplexing. Time division multiplexing. Or this is a digital technique, is popularly known as TDM. So in this technique, so again, the devices are there, which will do the multiplexing. And we have the other side, which we need to do what is called as DMA, demultiplexing, called DMUX. And the bandwidth or the channel is there between these two devices. And again, I will assume that there are uh, three users, one, two, three, one, two, and there is a third user. Now in this mode or in this kind of, in this method, so in this technique, what we do is, rather than splitting in frequency or in the wavelength, each of the user are allocated with a time slot, right? So like this time is allocated for, and in this time, this whole bandwidth is allocated to user one. Right, so this is allocated for user one. We have three users, and this is my user two. And there is one more bandwidth. I mean, the time window. So this is allocated to user three. So it's called as time division. The users are, instead of giving in the frequency or in the wavelength, the whole bandwidth is dedicated to one user on a given time slot. So there are three users and we observe that they can uh, have three time slots. Now in this time division multiplexing, there are some challenges that Okay, so we will discuss more on the time division multiplexing in our next video. Thank you very much.